So this is a video I wasn't expecting to make. So last week I put out a short video of how I made the arched top of these pickets for a picket fence I was asked to make. So I just done a quick little short video of the jigger set up for the bandsaw. Really simple to me. I made one years ago and I've made a few ever since just to to do different arches on things. But I didn't realise it was something people would be interested in. So a subscriber called Philip Jones, hi Philip, he requested to me that I'd make a video and not just a short on how I've done this. So here's the video. There's all the ones that I've cut. So it's 4 by one timber, rough saw and treated. I cut it to about 900 mil and then I arched the top on it. And I think I've done about 60 of them. So here's the jig, just on my small bandsaw. I've done a bandsaw video last week about you know, having a wide blade in one, having a narrow blade in the other. Well this is the perfect job for the narrow 6 mil blade. And this bandsaw is not the best but it coped perfectly well with this job. The only thing it didn't cope with is because the piece I'm cutting is on top of this one. So it's a bit away from the throat in the table. So the dust collection wasn't the best. So I ended up attaching a vacuum just to cope with some of the dust. And I've just put a couple of fixing plates just to hold that in place with a couple of clamps. So anyway, the jig is a piece of half inch MDF, quick slot cut in it. And then I use one of the pieces of 4B1 to attach. And it's got a pivot point, which I'll show you in a minute. So then I've put a little piece of MDF. I've just nailed that on quickly. And that's just a stop. And then another piece of MDF with a little notch. So I can push it up to there. That gives me the length. And there's just another little stop. So I've come back this side. The stops are both on that side because the jig travels in this direction. So it's pulling the wood. If it was on this side, then the wood would fall off that way. It's only on one side because it only needs to be on one side. I can hold the timber with my hand and pull it through so I don't need to clamp it or anything like that. A hand clamp does the job. So if I show you underneath, I've just fitted simple cleats, just nailed them on all around the table so that the jig can't move on all four sides. Just half inch off cut cleats. So I'll take the jig off the table and show you the pivot point. So here's what's going on on the other side. Got a slot in a piece of 12mm MDF. It's got some cleats that sandwich the table quite closely so it can't move anyway. And then I clamped it down. That screw there passes into the piece of 4B1 which I used as part of the jig and that's just the pivot point. Right, I'll just take this screw out. So there's the pivot points I've used, a bit of trial and error. I tried that one and it was a bit too close so I came back and used that one. So what I did was this the piece of 4B1 I've just taken off. So if you look there, I've gone dead centre. So it's 100 mil wide, so 50 mil. And then I worked out what the radius I wanted it to be, which is 60 millimetres. So 60 mil away from the blade. Drill a pile of hole so the screw can turn nicely in it. And then I used a brad all to mark. So that's 50 mil from either side. So bang on in the middle and then 60 mil there. 
but I left it a bit long so I, I trimmed a bit off decided what length they want it to be and I put that stop on cut a little notch in it with the edge stop and then a little side stop there so I've put that piece back on the bench then grab this piece and turn it over get the screw put it in the hole put it all the way through just so it's easier to see and line it, line it up with the hole put that screw back in so now I can put it back on the bandsaw and because I put them cleats on it it'll go back on the table the same place each time no marking no measuring no nothing just put the G clamps on to hold the jig in place and then my extra dust extraction and just clamp that into place and then there it is good to go again so you can keep this aside in your workshop and you can use it time and time again to create exactly the same pickets for your fences. So now I've put the jig back onto the bandsaw. I've realised I haven't got any more 4B1 left to do a cut. All I've got is this piece which I used as a prototype to see if the person I made the fence for would prefer that kind of shape over the curve but they preferred the curve. So what I can do is use this piece, but it's gonna be a bit shorter, so it won't be pushed up to the backstop. So if this was an actual piece, I place it on the jig and push it up to the backstop, like that, and then push it up to the side stop, and then the other end, I'll push it up to the side stop there. Then I'd use my hand clamp there and my other hand be there, well away from the blade, just to make sure that it's firmly down on the table and it's not going to move anywhere. But with the side stop, it shouldn't move anywhere. But because this piece is a bit short, because I've done it as a prototype, all I'll do, I'll move it away from the back stop. And just have it hanging over so it's going to cut. As always, safety glasses are a must. So that is how easy it is to cut fence pickets on the bandsaw with an arch tap. Just make yourself a decent little jig and away you go. So I hope you enjoyed this quick little video and I hope you watched it and enjoyed it, Philip Jones. So for the people who subscribe to me, if you leave me a comment, I always try and get back to you. If you ask me to do something, if I can do it, I'll try and do it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time.